Hey, this is your favorite German compositor, Sebastian Schütt. Welcome back to Nuke Timeout episode 4. In the last episode, we had a look at how you can monitor your Nuke script performance with the help of performance timers. We will continue the topic for this episode by having a look at Nuke's profile node. We will also compare both approaches and talk about pros and cons. I also quickly want to mention that the official Split the Diff website has launched, where you can find dedicated blog posts for all the videos on my YouTube channel, as well as downloads, so you can finally get all those gizmos and Nuke and Python scripts that I'm using. You can find the link in the description below. Are you ready? Let's go! Nuke's profile node offers a great way of monitoring your script in node performance. If you want, even by measuring in separate isolated areas. We just need to pop in one or multiple profile nodes and plug it right into the stream where we would like to receive our values from. The node properties itself don't offer you much besides defining the frame range you want to get your data for and opening the profile panel in a floating window. You can also open it from every available pane menu. We can use frame ranges, groups of ranges, ranges by every nth frame as well as individual frames. Let's open up the interface. Now we just need to select the profile node we would like to process and hit the profile button. Time to grab a coffee. This can take as long as locally rendering your script. During the measuring process, similar to running performance timers, Nuke starts color coding your nodes based on performance, with red being very slow over to green being very fast, relative to each other. There are four different data types which you can create profiles for. The most important one is calculated regardless. You need to have at least one type enabled though, otherwise even the wall data will not be processed. It doesn't hurt to run them all. We will have a viewing filter option later on to hide unnecessary information. After all the frames have been processed, we can see the first charts popping up. We have graphs for all data types available and like I said, we can filter them out if needed. Nuke does a good job in converting all the measured times into percentages. You can choose if you want to see the results grouped by node class or individual nodes. That way you can judge if a specific node class is slow in general or if one specific node of that class is just acting up. Please be aware that this interface only shows you the top 50 nodes. The rest is collected under other. Alternatively, you can select nodes in the node graph and add them to the display filter. Also, you can switch the chart type to table and all of the nodes will be listed. Here you will also be able to select nodes in order to find them in the node graph. The pie chart gives us a different kind of view on how much every node contributes to 100% processing time, while Timeline gives us the chance to judge the performance over the whole frame range. This also works with the node selection filter. Talking about time, by default the other three shards show us an average value for the chosen frame range. We can switch it to frames though and click through them step by step. Also to mention is the threshold filter. You can set a minimum percentage value so nodes below a certain contribution will not show up in the charts. This filter only works for the table chart type. Alright, if we now want to process another profile node, you have to be aware that your current stats will be gone and you will have to reprocess them. Luckily, you can export the profile data into an XML file. And reload later. Now comes the great part. That way we can also import XML files previously created via Nuke's performance timers. This is a file I created for a different script in the last episode. Please check out Nuke Timeout episode 3 to see how you can write XML files during render time. It is way more convenient to open those files here in the profile interface and you can see that you don't have to be in the actual script the XML is referring to. Okay. Let's do a quick comparison between both approaches, performance timers and profile node, and also think about how we can get the best out of both of them. Performance timers. They are quick to enable and great for a quick play and check for slowdown areas. They measure the performance right where you place the viewer. Color coding and all dataset values underneath the node form a great visual guide. You have easy options to output XML files during render time. On the other hand, storing already processed values is not possible, especially if you want to measure multiple areas. There's no support of reading through XML files within the performance timers. That's why I used a Python script in the last episode. An XML file only outputs the processing time, not the contribution in percentage. Profile node. 
It is a very user-friendly way of printing out results, including multiple filter options. It's a quick and easy way to read and save and therefore switch between different profiles. Nuke automatically calculates percentage values for you based on the times in milliseconds printed by the XML file. The profile interface can read XML files written out by performance timers. On the negative side, color coding is only enabled during processing, so there is no direct feedback in the node graph after the profiling process stopped. The interface only outputs performance in percentage, not the actual time measured. Only one profile node gets cached in the interface. You can't just switch. You will have to recalculate or save profiles. So, my conclusion and personal preference of use is the following. If I quickly want to check my performance for a few frames, I enable performance timers to get my visual cues of the problematic areas in the node graph. I also use them to export an XML during render time. To view and examine this XML file, I use the profile node though, unless I need to see time values. I also use the profile node for extensive checking of my script and if I want to measure more than just a few frames. It's great to have both options available. Let me know in the comments about your choice. My name is Sebastian Schütt and I'll see you soon.